Okay, um, it's always good to be back here at Nehavrom, even though I would like to be here under different circumstances. Usually Tuesday night we have a shir on the parsha, and uh, the Divrei Chizuk that I'll try to give myself for others uh, are connected to the parsha as well. One of the many puzzling events in Parsha's Bereshis is the story of Cain and Hevel. And one of the most confusing aspects of that is... Why was Hevel killed? In other words, Cain brought a korban. Uh, he says he brought a very low-grade korban, flaxseed, which is popular with the health people, but not very tasty. right? And uh, Hevel brought a very nice korban, the finest sheep. Hevel's korban was accepted by Hashem. Cain's was rejected. Next thing we know, Hevel's dead. And Cain is alive. So the Chassam Sofer actually says that the Torah wants you to get used to the fact in the very beginning of the Torah that we don't understand the world. We don't understand the cheshbonus of the world. He goes into more mystical things that it says in the Sfarim that the Neshama of Hevel actually came back as a Gilgal in Moshe Rabbeinu. And Cain, all of his descendants disappeared. But looking at it at, at the moment, we see the incomprehensible. We see things that don't make sense. And that's part of who we are and how we are. Nonetheless, there are other explanations as to why Hevel was killed. Yisma Chisrael, the Alexander Rebbe, quotes the Avni Nezer, the first Sochet of the Rebbe, the son-in-law of the Kotzker, who said like this, there's a fascinating Targum Yonasan that fills in the conversation between Cain and Hevel before that murder. The Apostle only says that they spoke. It doesn't tell us what they spoke about. So the Targum Yonason says that Cain said, less din ve less dayan. There's no judge, there's no judgment, right? There's no world to come because this doesn't make any sense. Why would Hashem reject my korban? Again, it's a much longer shear to see why Cain brought that type of korban and why he thought it would be accepted. And Hevel told him, guess what? Is din ve is dayan. There's judgment and there's a judge and there's punishment for those who do wrong, and reward for those who do right. And that's why Hashem took my korban and rejected yours. So he said what was missing there in Hevel was that his brother was hurting. In other words, Cain felt rejected. Cain felt cast away. Cain felt alone. Hevel was his brother, his only brother, and he didn't feel his pain. He didn't try to comfort him. He didn't try to support him. He was just somewhat, perhaps, again, we speak about great people very carefully, but there may have been a tiny bit of triumphalism which was there. That I got it right and you got it wrong. And that's what happens. So that is a lesson that we certainly have to learn in all times of pain is to emphasize the midah of to be no seba olim chavero to feel other people's pain, right? And this is a key to who and how we are. Now, there are a variety of reasons why this is difficult for us. One reason is that a person thinks, what good does it do? If someone's suffering, what good does it do for him, for me, to suffer along with him? Now we just have two people suffering, right? Why don't I just not think about his situation and at least I'll be able to go on functioning, as opposed to him. Chaim Shmulevitz, who spent a large amount of time and energy in his life in the middle of no seboolim chavero, feeling people's pain, pouring out tears over other people's pain, he said it does make a difference. He says when Chazal used that expression to be no seboolim chavero, they were very deliberate, meaning if there's a heavy load that has to be dragged and you have a yoke, if I'm trying to drag that alone, it's very difficult. If you come and you put your shoulders under that yoke as well, it does make it easier for me. We may not understand the dynamics of it, but it does. Even if the person that we're sharing their pain isn't aware of it because they're geometrically, geographically distant from us or whatever in the spiritual world, it does make a difference. And... It, we're supposed to try, again, not to the point that it disables you, right? It shouldn't be 
uh, the part of why the enemy tries to uh, spread the films of the horrors that they do is to try to bring down the spirit of of uh, of our side. Right? This was done uh, in World War II. What's called the psyops, psychological operations. There was Tokyo Rose who would broadcast from Japan, and Lord Haha, a British trader who broadcast on behalf of the Germans, trying to project all the terrible things they were doing to the Allies and how they were winning, etc. So you can't give in to that to have it stop you from functioning and from doing. Bunim Prashischa said, "Courage for Leuten, else for Leuten. If you lose courage." You've lost everything. So that we certainly have. On the other hand, a person needs to be no se ba'ol, to feel the pain of others. That is the fuel of our tefillah. That is the fuel of our chesed even, of that which gets us to try and become inventive and think, what can we do? And Am Yisrael is doing so many beautiful things to try and help as many people as they can in as many ways. Another difficulty that we have in no se ba'ol in chavero is that it's hard for us to get out of the world that we know, which is the world of ourselves, right? Many times you'll see a person who gets very worked up. So I just saw on the news that it, there was an accident, right, at this intersection. I was just there yesterday. Okay, <laughs> so why, why is that shaking him up so much? There are accidents all over the place. It's because he's able to picture himself having been there. He's able to say, that could have been me. I've been at that intersection. I've stood there. I know what that's like. And uh, that's sometimes the only way we can feel anything. Ali Musser said, sounds a little bit cynical, but it's definitely true, that you see a fascinating phenomenon. Single guys at a wedding dance much more vigorously than married guys. Even newly married guys, unless it's, unless it's like a really close friend. The single guys are there, schwitzing, giving it their all. The married guys, you know, go around a couple times, wander <laughs> off to talk on the phone, and do different things. Why is that? So they said, because jeder chosen tanzt für sich. Meaning, they say, each bacher, each single guy who's dancing is really dancing at his own wedding. He's imagining his own wedding, and how happy he'll be at his own wedding, and that's there at the time. Once the person married himself, okay, I'm married. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking care of I'm okay. It, we do have that problem of being stuck in the world that we're in and only able to relate to things that are in familiar territory to us. Places that we've been before, people that we've actually met. Then something affects us. But if not, it's very hard for us to feel. Just interesting on that, there was somebody once came, there was a great post in New York, a big, someone once came to him with a question, he said, I was standing on a street corner, and I crossed the street, and then a car lost control, and went up on the side rock, right where I was standing. Should I make the bracha of Hagomel? So a big pointed to his laundry line. He said, you see those pants hanging there? Yesterday I was in those pants. He said, can you imagine what it would be? He says, what was, was right? Don't, but if this is the idea. We, we, we flash back even to things that didn't happen if it was to us, to what could have happened. So we're supposed to try to put ourselves to be able to expand, to enter the world of others, right? to open our minds and to connect to other people who are there. It'll help in terms, as Rav Chaim said, just to be no se ba'ol in chavero, in ways that we can see, in ways that we can't see. It certainly can open up the gates of tefillah that sometimes are closed where we want to feel and we can't. The other aspect we have to speak about a little bit, that I speak about carefully because uh, I'm not a person who can speak on public issues or forums at all, is just to be very careful with this concept of judging others or triumphalism, as the Avinezer spoke in terms of that thing. Nobody should be saying, I know why this happened or I know why this happened, where it happened, and to whom it happened, etc. There was once a tragedy in a summer camp in America. A young man was killed in a car accident, and Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky came to the Shloshim, and there was a speaker first who got up and gave a very fiery speech telling all the boys in the camp, this happened because of your Bittal Torah. 
And Rav Yaakov interrupted him. It wasn't characteristic of him. He said, Zenta Novi? Are you a Novi? You have Ruach HaKodesh? Right? How can you say such a thing? How do you know these things? He then went on, when Rabbi Yaakov spoke, he spoke, but we certainly should be mischazik in right, uh, Limud Torah, meaning to say that there are different things that we can see from the Torah to put more strength into in Am Yisrael or in times of danger, 100%. But to point fingers, not. The Talmud Rebbe Shlita gave a very beautiful cheshben that points out how and why we shouldn't be doing this. Let's say right now I shifted into speaking French, which I can't do very well despite my high school French. Who would I be speaking to? I'd be speaking to Leon. I don't know who else here is a French speaker. Otherwise, it makes no sense for me to speak to somebody in French if they don't understand French. So he said, if a, well, a tragedy happens, does that person on the beach in Eilat say, Oi, a tragedy happened to Ami, so that must mean I should be more careful with my tzniyas and I should, you know, keep Shabbos better. That isn't the language they speak. They don't put that together. So therefore, Hashem is not speaking to them. Who speaks that language? We speak that language. So therefore, who's Hashem talking to? He's talking to us. It's not a talking to them, or to say it even better, He's talking to me, because that's really the only person I can work on and I can work with. So that's where it has to be the introspection, which is there inside ourselves to try right, to improve ourselves, especially at the moment to look and to see what we can do in whatever ways we can to help others, to strengthen others, to feel the pain of others, to let that fuel our tefillah, to let that fuel our chesed. And uh, hopefully... With that, we can turn things around, right? That each of the things that we do, the chesed, and the being true with ourselves, and the power of tefillah, which is able to, it says it's like an atar, it's like a pitchfork that can pick up a bale of hay and throw it someplace else. So many things can be turned around. So we have to walk this tightrope, on one hand feeling pain, on the other hand, not getting crushed by it, recognizing the power that we have, keeping our spirits up and other people's spirits up, and certainly focusing, if it does have to be, in terms of trying to improve and repair on ourselves rather than making that cheshpin for others. May we hear Besaras Tovas soon for all of our Amen.